think I'm going to go with the green. So we have these like deeper greens. We've got a gold. Let's just look at the colors one more time. This is our palette. And I think I'll put it up here. Really pretty colors. I'm going to start with the lightest square in the top left. And I'm just going to take my Angie Hot and Flashy BK Beauty A503. It's a, it's a blending brush. And I'm gonna go into that lighter green over there very softly, tap off any excess, and I'm going to look into my eye. Oops, I almost forgot to prime my eyes. I've been trying all these fancy, expensive, well, more expensive eye primers. I'm back for my painterly paint pot <laughs> because the this has coverage and it only does what I ask it to do. All I want is a smooth surface that will take on an eyeshadow. I don't want any texture and I want to eliminate as much of that as I can. I like canceling out the tones that are in there that got like some veins. So there's like some pink and red and blue, the whole gamut. When you're cool toned, all your veins look blue, purple. But if you're warm toned, they look like they're green. So we all have interesting things to cover up. And I did include in the Sephora color correctors for everything. So you're gonna be excited. All right, so I've blanked out my eyes. Usually I like to put just a little powder. I'm just gonna take a little of, just take a little, I'll just take a little of the powder that we used under my eyes and put it over. There's just a little bit left on here. There we go. Perfect. Okay. All right, we're gonna take our A503 and go into that color, that upper left-hand square. And I am gonna look straight into a mirror. Now I have hooded eyes. This part of my eye is coming down. A little bit more on this side than this side. I did use my zip today and you guys, it's like the greatest thing ever. I had one a really long time ago going up against my brow bone here. I had one a long time ago when they first came out and it broke so many times and I just kind of gave up. But I was getting great results from it and I was very bummed but it was just a really hard experience for me. Well, fast forward a couple of years, and I'm sure you guys all watch Penn Smith skincare. And if you don't, you totally need to. She was she did a special thing this year where she contacted a bunch of the companies that she does a lot of work with and got them to do an extra day of Black Friday for those of us who somehow were taking care of everybody else and we missed it. And the zip, the new zip was on there. And I just, I don't know, it's like an impulse purchase. I was like, Penny thinks this thing is good again and it's good. Come out with a new one. I'm going to get one. So I did. And I love it and I have videos on it and we'll have more videos on it. But I think anything that you can do at home that's proactive 
It's so nice, you know, anything you can do to make yourself feel better in just like a few minutes of your day, I think is so good. All right, this is a really nice transition color and actually it's not as dark as I thought it was going to be. So we can go in maybe just a little bit stronger than we did. And I am just creating a transition color for here that's kind of like my fake crease. And everything that I do, I want to bring up and out from this area. I don't want to go too far this way because I want to be able to use this real estate because all this back in here that I used to have when I was young isn't there when my eyes are open. You can see it when my eyes are closed, when they're halfway closed, but when they're open, you cannot. So I just want to look straight into the mirror right now in this eyeshadow that I just put on. I just want to make sure that on the edges over here where I have more hanging down than I do somewhere else, that this color looks like it makes sense. Like it doesn't just stop or it doesn't go uneven. And you can pull that straight out like that. And it just makes your eye look that much more open. Like that. Okay, let's take a look at our colors again. You're looking at them up here. Oh, I don't know, you guys. I feel like I'm going to kind of go for it a little bit with this green. I was thinking maybe if we did green on the mobile lid, the bright green, and then we took some of this sparkly gold and put it kind of in the center as sort of like a halo, but then use this extra dark one to just smoke it out. I think that could be really pretty. So we're going to start with the smoking out because I think we want to see how smoky we're going to be. This one is from Singe Beauty. It's the E05. It's a little bit fluffy, but it's small. I'm going into that other square. It's got the deeper color. And I want to go right here in the corner. And I just want to start pulling that color out. And this brush gives you a lot of control so that I can keep that low and really, really close to the lash line. And pulling on it so that when it goes past the fold, this is all going to get cleaned up. So don't worry about the shape of this so much right now. The fact that we got it pulled out and it's up and out is great. And it's funny, this color looks super dark in the palette. But as you start to pull it out, it becomes very green. I really like that. It's like you know they're green when you're looking at them, but when you look at it in the palette and it looks super dark and you haven't started blending it out yet, you just don't know how green it is. So I'm kind of keeping my eye open and I just wanna make sure that on both sides I've gone and looked at what it looks like with eyes open. Now don't freak out. This is all gonna get blended. What we really wanted to do here was get this to come out. Okay, the next thing that we're going to do before we blend that at all, we are going to get a flat brush and I'm gonna go into this beautiful bright green and tap this off. 
And I want to put this on my mobile lid. And I'm doing this by patting. And even though this is a super bright color, you can see that it's starting to meld with the really dark one that I had. And I'm trying to keep this nice and low. Bring this out a little bit, kind of above. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Not concerned with blending yet. I want to get the colors down first. I want to see the intensities that we're looking at before we start pulling anything really out. Okay, so at the moment we're looking nuts, which is fine by me. And these greens are gorgeous. Just beautiful. Okay. I would like to start blending this green into this green. So I'm just going to start pulling this one kind of up and out. And I'm using just a, a brush with nothing on it when you feel like it starts to have more eyeshadow on it than you would like. Just wipe it off on your very soft towel and you can keep going. Padding this in to make sure it's in my shape that I like and then really pulling this out. Okay, don't worry about the mess. I'm gonna take my finger now and just go right here again with the darkest color. Because what's gonna happen is when we get our mascara on, if we have that dark color right here, it's gonna make our lashes look very lush. Go over here. Don't get crazy yet. I know that you're like, Blend that out, lady. It looks terrible. Trust the process. I'm going to go back in with this color that I used as a transition. Okay, so now we have like these colors on just full blast. What I want to do is some serious blending. I am going to tap this into here and tap this out this way. I'm trying to keep that lighter green, the real green green kind of underneath here. I'm going to use my finger to take some of this gold and it's going to go right in the center of my lid and it's going to get this beautiful reflect going in the middle. So this is taking down some of that crazy bright that we had at the beginning. And when you have hooded eyes like me, it's good to take a little brush, go right at the edge, because that's what people are going to see when you first open up your eyes, just that little bit at the edge, so we'll work on that. Okay, we're gonna start to shape up this shape using our Ulta Beauty Q-tips that are flat and pointy. I'm gonna look into my eye here. 
and I'm just going to pull without pulling hard. I'm just doing it this direction. And we have like the perfect wing instead of the big giant messy thing. Everybody see that? Look the difference between the two. This eye is lifted and this eye is not. So we're going to go over here. Pull out that color. So you can already see and I'm not pulling hard. This isn't doing anything permanently damaging to my eyes. And I'm going to blend this also. And you can see that we have like this great shape going now. I want to take a little bit of this really pretty gold with a very small brush. I want to put this as an inner corner highlight just to really brighten up the inside of my eye. And I can even go up into here and take a tiny little bit of it under the brow. We'll add to that as we go, because we're still working on the blend. We're not totally done yet. All right, the only mascara that I have been using lately when it comes to a dramatic look is the Vast Lash from Victoria Beckham Beauty. This is a wonderful tubing formula. The wand is curved and it's got lots and lots of little brush hairs to really get there. And the thing about this mascara is you have some, ooh, you know what? I'm not putting that on yet. I almost did it. We have two things that we have to do first. Okay, so my lashes are curled. Today I used the Ruffer. Sometimes I use the Ruffer, sometimes I use the Surratt. They're both really great. The Ruffer one apparently comes in different sizes. Okay, for all of you that were like freaking out because we weren't very blended, I'd like to introduce you to fingers. And fingers are the absolute best way to move product and to remove product and to place product where you really want it. And then you can always blend it later on. These are the two green eyeliners that I have. One of the, they're, the, my eyeliners are all from Victoria Beckham Beauty. This one is the sequin green that is not supposed to go inside the eyes. And this one is more of an olive green. Um, it's a darker green. Because I'm going under my lashes first to tight line, I'm going to start with this. Plus, I don't want to put that one in the water line because you're not supposed to. But what I'm doing here is I'm tight lining, but I'm going from this side. And I'm going all the way down and filling in in between and also on the waterline. Take your time. You want to build up the most product on the outside of your eye because we're going to be pulling everything this way so you get that real up lifting motion. 
So you can like go like up like onto the lashes even in between them. You can already see that's like a huge difference. I'm gonna do this side. Okay, we're ready for mascara because that's how we can tell what else needs to happen here. I can tell you that I definitely want to hit that gold again in the middle. I'm gonna show you a different brush that we're gonna use. We're gonna get everything blended out. We're gonna get concealer put over here. It's all gonna look really beautiful and blended and nice. No worrying. Okay, so let's start with mascara. Get one chance on this mascara. When it dries, it dries. I start at the very, very edge and I blink into the mascara. So it goes all the way from root to tip. And I'm turning the applicator as I go because there's a lot of mascara on there. We really want to evenly distribute it. And we want to do it in a way that really helps accent this side where I'm trying to pull it out. See how nice and black and lush these look? Putting a dark liner, whether it be dark green or black, this is exactly what you want to do. And then just go on those very edges. See if you can catch them and kind of wiggle. And when you think you're, you're good, you're good. You just can't go back. I do my bottom lashes. I'm just barely touching them. And we will do the bottom. I mean, right? It's good. It also helps you see where, where your eyeshadow needs to go. Just remember that when it starts to dry, that is what you're getting. It's really hard to come back from it, so you just sort of have to stop. If you want to do it in a more buildable way, her other mascara is perfect for that. So right now, looking at my eyes, they look very different than they did without mascara. We're going to do the bottom lash line and then we're gonna do some more blending, adding some gold and some little touches and making sure everything is super nicely blended. And we will be on our way. Um, I like to use a very small fan brush or you can use just a small brush to get in here. I would like to use a very small amount of the darker color that's over here. So I'm gonna just touch this in here, get right underneath the lashes like that and connect the lower lash line with that little kick out that you've got on top. Don't worry that this isn't blended yet. We're just gonna go like this on both sides first, where you're getting in here and connecting that little kick out that you have that's your wing-ish. Just the dark. Okay, I'm gonna wipe this off. Now I wanna go into the light one that we put as a transition. So the upper left square. I wanna start over here. And you're gonna pull it. There we go. Look at an eyelash that was stuck to that. And I'm just blending this out. See that? That really dark color to be on one side and the rest of it to just sort of be very blurry for now. 
Make sure that coming out from over here, you've got that nice little kick out. We're still going to do another cleanup, so make sure this is coming out. And we're going to take a nice fluffy brush and we're just going to make sure that this top part is blended and it comes out. Keep it where this light color is for right now. Wipe that off. Everything is about the blend. And you can see that this is giving a nice amount of real estate to us to use for the eyeshadow, which is the greatest. Okay, we're going to take another one of these and go right under here and up. Under here, up. Okay, I'm going to take this side, pull it, this side, pull it. Okay, I don't want to have anything harsh coming out from the sides. What I want to do is take a little bit of this lighter green color, just on like my weakest ring finger, and just go like this right here to bring a little bit of that brighter color up on this area where kind of my lid is coming down a little bit. And you're gonna have to look in the mirror to see what looks the most even for you. And then do that. I have not wet these before, these, this eyeshadow in particular. I usually don't have to with the number 21 wrapper. So I'm going to go into this gold color again. And I'm going to tap it off so I don't have anything falling down. But I'm going to go this way this time. And I want to go all the way to the edge of the middle here. Putting that gold. And then keep it in the center. like that, and then take a very small amount of it here, and use your finger if you have to, to lighten up that inner corner. Make sure your brow has a little bit of that on there. You can go to the other side. You can just press this. You just want to make sure you've got that little bit right at the edge of the lashes because when you have a hooded eye, that's what people see when your eyes are open. Okay, we're going to put a little of this in here. Okay. Make sure you like your blend over here and over here. I'm using a clean brush because this is our or golden color that we're working with. Okay, now we have our one eyeshadow stick, our eyeliner stick in 
this sparkly color. And I want to put that right at the edge of my lash. And then I'm going to take this little smudger, pull that just up into that area where I've already got eyeshadow. But what this is doing is it's going behind the lashes where you want that like extra depth and color and just giving a little bit more interest to the eye. It's such an unbelievably beautiful look. I really love clean brushes, you guys. I feel like there's just no better way to work with real color than to go in with clean brushes to really blend and make this a seamless look. Now, obviously, I'm not like going to the grocery store like this. Um, it's quite a look, but I think it's beautiful. I'm waiting for my eyeliner on the top to let me put some eyeliner on the bottom. So what I do is I kind of take off whatever's rubbed as much as I can get. And then I take my Victoria Beckham Eye Brightening Pencil. I'm gonna go inside the waterline here. And it just brightens things a little bit. Takes away any redness that you have. I mean, I love greens and this certainly delivered for me everything that I was hoping that it was going to. I feel like, like I'm wearing jewelry, you know, like, like I have emeralds on my eyes. And when I look at this, it's a big eye, right? Do I want to have like a whole big lip? I usually, the answer to that for me is usually no. So I'm going to take one of my very few lipsticks. This color has some coral. I think this is going to be really pretty with that. And I'm going to... Actually, I think this is quite pretty with this. It's got a little of that gold. And the perfect lip liner for this is going to be the number one from Victoria Beckham. The number one, it's a very peachy color. And it's gonna allow me to do a little overdrawing just over the top here. And under here. Otherwise, I always follow my regular lip line. I like to kind of go in. Then always blur. So, because this is like a sheer sparkly formula, I'm probably not going to use it on my cheeks, but I do have some really beautiful peachy coral blushes. Okay, usually I don't pick a blush last, but we're going to today. I'm going to show you what some of our options are. I want to go kind of a muted color. I have one from Chanel. It'll look very pretty with this lip and it won't take anything away from the eye. There won't be any crazy brightness. Now this one looks like it's going to be bright orange, but it has some pink in it. So it's like very hard to I 
think it's just going to be too, too much for this look. Then we have Ardent Brick. I kind of want to go into more of like a deeper into the peaches. I can go right here. Maybe if it was winter, I would think about that one. This one is very different on the hand than it is anywhere else. This has like a lot more of that pinky color that we have going here, like a pinky peach. Give that a definite maybe. Okay, then we have a couple from Victoria Beckham. We have this one called Roller Skate, which is kind of a little bit more pink than I think that we are looking for right now. And we have this one that's that bright orange. And obviously it doesn't have to be this crazy. That is gonna bring a lot of really pretty coral to the cheek. And give us some color. Then we have Molten from Phytosurgeons. I don't feel like that's quite the tone that we're going for. Do love these blushes though. This one's called Inferno. It's a little bit more muted and a little bit more bricky and almost could be like a contour that would work with this because It's like a very skin native, this color. I'm gonna keep this one out. Okay, then we have Ember. This is a real favorite of mine. Anytime I need something that's coral, but not crazy bright, it's usually my good buddy. We have Smolder which is even more of that brown color. Seems very autumnal to me. Ooh, that's reminding me of a blush. I'm gonna show you one more. And this one's called Inferno. That's the one we were keeping out. I wanna show you one more. This one is powder blush that was part of the Chanel fall collection this year. There were two different color combinations. One was a coral and one was more of a, like a mauve purpley color. I want to use a little bit of this and then one of these to brighten with, just because I think it's really nice to use two different textures of blush. Always knock off. You can even knock off and go off the hand so you're not putting too much on at once. I don't want to go past the center of my eye, no matter what. And I'm always taking my blush up high. See how that's giving us really nice, even color? I love to use both a powder and a cream if I can on my cheeks. I kind of want to pop a little color up here. I want to wake up the face. I want to do something a little bit unexpected. I've been swatching so much my fingers are like dead. Okay. We're going to give ourselves a little pop. And I am going to use this Chanel number no. one blush in a color that I can't read, but it I'll find it. <laughs> going in with my ring finger because it's my weakest finger. And when I'm going in with a cream product, I am tapping onto my hand first. And I like to take this right up near my eye. And you can see 
and I'm just getting that little bit of brightness and I don't want to take it too far. Do you see? Just literally tapping this close to my eye. It's not giving neon, but it gave me a little bit of brightness, which I really like. For our last little addition, I want to use any highlighter that you have that's got a nice peachy tone. Just tap it nice and high. Take a tiny bit on your nose. And put some here if you want. Just to tie that all in together. And then I want to take a finishing powder. This is from Holiday from not this past winter, but the winter before. You can still find these online. I know it looks fantastic, but this is the Lotus Finishing Powder. It's called the Lotus Perfect Blur Glow Powder. I am a huge glow powder lover of Shantikai. Anytime they come out with a glow powder, I grab them. It will just add that life back to your skin and make your skin look totally flawless. Make sure you like the way everything's blended. That's it. That is our groovy green Fabulous for the St. Patrick's Day that we just had. Well, I'm celebrating a little late, but it's okay. I posted some pictures of Chicago on St. Patrick's Day because they dye our Chicago River green, and it's so cool. If you didn't get to, a chance to see that, when I post this look, I'll put the green Chicago River so you can see how cool that is. They do that every year. The boats drive through it to mix it. People go kayaking in it. There's boats up going back and forth all day. People are outside. It's just, we had a beautiful St. Patrick's Day this year, like weather-wise and stuff. Anyway, I love a green look. I think that they are fun and playful. I love them with coral. So this worked out great. I love the fact that I've got, you know, quite an eye going, a cheek that is pretty, but not overbearing. Since we're going with a lighter color, if you're like doing those last little minute things, use your fingers on this and just keep it up very high. And tap it in. It'll just give you that tiny bit of chisel to make your cheekbones look higher when they're a little bit darker up here. Not bringing it all the way down where they are because our faces, we want to push them up. A very strong eye. We managed to not bring in any other shadows, but I would. I would bring in a matte like a cream color to blend everything out next time. I think that that would be easier than always going to clean brush, clean brush, clean brush. The Dior Warm Neutrals, and I know they've reformulated and they are a little bit different, but you know, just if you looked in here, like, you know, a color like this would be fine. And all you would do is just take one of your brushes Go into just that very matte color. And it just helps to blend everything without taking away from the look. And softening.
So what do you guys think? Is this a look you would wear? Do you like my little eyeliner trick to do your eye lift? It does give you that really nice line, that nice lift, and you don't have to get it from trying really hard with an eyeliner to figure out, okay, where am I gonna look? Where am I gonna skip? Where am I gonna keep this? And we're making all kinds of faces all day. And so like, I just feel, I felt like my wing was like kind of over here, kind of over here. And then it was like filled in this way. And I was like, please don't do this anymore. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You get the same effect with that uplift. These are the kind of things that we do on here. We do deep dives on one thing. Or we may talk about a whole subject. We talk about aging in the best way possible and having that not be a bad thing and having it be something that's really good, actually. We're done with a lot of that yuck that we've already been through. And I like the idea of being pickier, more selective, however you want to look at it. And really decide, like, what place is this going to have for me in my collection? And really knowing what you have. That would be my golden retriever opening the door himself. Hi, you want to come say hello? Come here, what's the tool? <gasps> Will you come say hi? Or are you just busting in to get a little drink of water? Sunny, 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 you need to come over? Oh. Hi. I don't know if we can see him here. Can you say hi? Come here, Boo Boo. Come here, back here. I hope you guys can see him. This is my golden. Hi, baby. All right, I think I'm gonna go play with him for a little while. <laughs> he's very sweet. He's just very naughty, but he's our toddler. We needed to have a child in the house because when our son went to college, then what? But anytime you see me going like this and trying to get hairs off of me, it's just because I love him so much. I can't, I can't stop even when I'm wearing a black sweater. All right, you guys, thank you so much for being here. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please go ahead, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell so you know when I upload. I upload two or three videos a week and they vary in length. Sometimes they're a little longer, sometimes they're a little shorter, but I would love to have you. I am also planning a big giveaway for my 5,000 subscriber count, it will be coming in. All the information is going to be coming very, very soon. So make sure you're subscribed here to hear about that. And if you want to go over to my Instagram, you will get another entrance by putting your name over there and following me on Instagram. So I hope everybody has a fantastic day. Oh, and thank you to my fairy godmother and sister-in-law. If anyone ever needs anything designer, clothing, bags, whatever it is that you're looking for, and you are a serious buyer, I can connect you with her. No one's better. <laughs> no one knows more. No one has... She's got talent. Let's just put it that way. So keep it in the back of your mind if you're ever in the market and you're serious. And don't forget that every great look that you'd like to keep looking great deserves the best setting spray. And that is the Veil setting spray from Hourglass. Look at the mist. This is a new bottle. See that? It will just 
melt everything together. Keep your makeup looking really fresh for a long time. The mist is so fine. It's not like you're like, you know, someone spitting at you or anything. I highly recommend this because I think it makes mature skin have a glow and keep our makeup where it's supposed to be and also sort of like get everything kind of melted together. So I hope everybody has a fantastic day and I will see you guys all very soon. Take care. Bye.